country's EcoBank Transnational announcing a 34% increase in its first half net profit to $93.8 million. Revenue rose by 24%, while pre-tax profit increased by 30% to $133.8 million. For more on those numbers now, let's cross over to Lagos, where Wole Famarewa is standing by with Arnold Ekpe, CEO of EcoBank Transnational. Good afternoon, or should I say good morning to you uh, on that end, Wole. Well, of course, it depends on where you are. Good afternoon, good morning. Well, joining me in the studio, like you did mention, is Arnold Eppert, CEO at ETI, to give us some clarity on some of the numbers released last week. Thank you so much, Arnold, for joining us on the show today. Well, okay. first of all, I mean, many would, not few will argue anyway, that with exposure to 32 African countries, you're a true African bank, so to speak. And you can probably tell us about the African opportunity more than, better than anyone else. How are you reading the opportunity in Africa, more so for the banking sector? I think the current um, view on, on Africa as a whole is a very positive one. Africa is the second largest growing region in the world, as we speak. And we believe that the growth for the first time is potentially sustainable. We have a very positive view on the future. All right, and then let's talk about your numbers. Uh, very positive, obviously. Uh, we've seen profits up 34%, uh, revenues up about 24%. But what I find is that that revenue growth is driven more by non-interest items. 10% um, by 10% growth in interest income compared to 44% for non-interest. Tell us a bit about that dynamic. Well, there's a bit of lead and lag in, in, in these numbers, which you have to take into account. But one of the things we're doing is basically de-risking our balance sheet. So we're moving to a better class of risks. Mm. The market is getting more competitive. So we've seen some compression in margins. Mm. We're very strong in non-interest income because of our particular dynamic. As you know, we have a very large footprint. We have the ability to deal in a lot of currencies. We have the ability to finance a lot more trade across Africa. And that's beginning to show in the numbers. Now, obviously, like you said, you deal in many currencies. And what's the, what are, should I say, what are your expectations for currency risk? You're in 32 African countries, like I mentioned, and what type of stability are you expecting going forward, more so because you are exposed to that risk? The, the reality is that African currencies generally do devalue. Um, but the good news is that the level of devaluation and the degree of devaluation is a lot less now than what we've seen in the past. Yeah. However, at EcoBank, we've had some experience at this, so we do have hedging strategies that enable us to mitigate probably not eliminate it all, but to mitigate some of this risk. Okay, let's look at some of the numbers. Nigeria is contributing about 23% of revenues. We need to talk a bit about your Nigeria strategy, because recently Af Echo Bank has been in the news for some interest in some of the um, rescued banks. Give us a sense of how you want to pursue Nigeria going forward, more so because of its importance to the group numbers. Uh, Nigeria contributes currently about 28% of our balance sheet. Okay, um, The rest of the balance sheet is outside of Nigeria. Yeah. Our operations in Nigeria are essentially subscale, given the size of the market, and we need to do something about that. Over the last four years, we have done three acquisitions, um, Hallmark Bank, Allstate Trust Bank, and Africa International Bank, and that has helped us build scale, but we're still not there yet. Yeah. So we do look at both organic and inorganic means of growing the business, yeah. and that's one of the challenges we'll have to face going forward. Let's talk about Côte d'Ivoire. Um, obviously, we, everybody knows about the pressure that that has had on business generally. And yeah. of course, your business, because you closed down for a little bit. Yeah. How do you see recovery in that market? Well, we, we run the second largest bank in Côte d'Ivoire. We were probably the last bank to close and one of the first to reopen. Yeah. But Côte d'Ivoire has seen a significant uptick since it reopened. Uh, the current uh, head of state, as you know, is, is considered one of the best managers. Uh, economic managers in Africa and it's getting a lot of support from the international community and the French community so mm. we've been quite surprised by the positive uptick in mm. the last few months we believe that's sustainable because Côte d'Ivoire represents a very significant part of our francophone presence obviously okay let's talk a bit about how you're driving your balance sheets loans and deposit well let's start with the loans um, Nigeria obviously we've seen some impact on yeah your loan book because of um, non-performing loans. And we've seen Amcon step in to help, should I say, um, restructure the whole loan portfolio of the sector, including yours, obviously. Yeah. Talk, 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 first of all, let's talk a bit about the net impact of that transaction, your transaction with Amcon on your Nigerian operations. I think the Amcon transaction, it was very positive, not only on us, but on the banking industry as a whole. And it's something that I think that a lot of African countries could learn from in terms of 
sanitizing and stabilizing the financial sector. On our part, we used it to de-risk our portfolio. Uh, mm -hmm. We've now brought our NPL ratios down from somewhere around 39% to less than 10%, uh, with the objective of taking that down to 5% by year end. So the Amcon transaction, I think we did about $400 million with them, um, um, has been very, very positive for our business here. Yeah. And let's talk a bit about how you're going to expand Nigeria, because obviously you are looking to expand organically and inorganically. But there is a sense that the real sector, in particular in Nigeria, is risky to deal with. What opportunities exactly are you are attracting you to Nigeria to the extent that you want to invest a lot more in, in this market? You know, I'm an old-style banker. I've been in this business for over 31 years now. Um, the Nigerian market is no more risky than other markets. And I think the, the challenge is on us bankers to be able to lend money prudently. The real sector does not represent an unduly high risk. There was some movement away from the real sector, and I think we're just moving back to the real sector. Mm. Obviously, the ability to support the real sector will be enhanced if the infrastructural challenges are improved in Nigeria. Mm. But on the whole, we see very positive growth. Because mm. Nigeria represents a very large part of the, the African economy. And outside of South Africa, it's the largest geography that we have. Mm. And then talk a bit about your strategy to drive deposits. We've seen that up about 31% in the first half to $9 billion across the group. Just give us some, a sense about how you're achieving those uh, pretty stellar numbers in the context of what we're seeing in other banks. I think Echo Bank is seen as a safe haven. I think we're seen as a prudent bank. We try not to talk too much. We tend to maintain a low profile and try to do banking the old-fashioned way, you know, mm -hmm. which is keep your costs down if you can and try and grow your revenues. Uh, one of the things we've tried to do was to build a branch network and we have in total across the group 760 branches, 250 of those are in Nigeria. We still have a lot of work to do to use those branches as good collection points. Mm -hmm. But the domestic and the retail banking strategy we've put in place has been resulting or has had the impact of increasing customers coming into our branches putting deposits with us, whether it's current account or savings account. And that traction, actually, we've seen over the last 12 months is accelerating, so it's been a very positive thing. We think that our strategy of focusing on the branches, our strategy of trying to deliver a suite of products that customers can enjoy not only within the country, but if they move outside of the country, it's something that, that, that is becoming very attractive.